Hi everybody, this is Lara with your end of the week video for the S&P 500 for the trading week ending Friday 14th of June. I'm still expecting the low of December 2018 is going to remain intact and the current consolidation may end next week. It may be very shallow and I'm expecting when it's done a third wave up at 2 degrees may exhibit an increase in strength. It may exhibit an increase in momentum and it may or should have support from volume, although in current market conditions it might not. The target for it remains at 3104. Elliott Wave Analysis first this week, Classic Analysis last. The Elliott Wave Analysis expects that at the end of the bear market ending March 2009, a bull market beginning there is unfolding as a five wave Elliott impulse. A sim the most simple Elliott Wave structure subdivides one, two, three, four, five, five steps forward. 1 is off to the left of the chart, you can see that on my monthly charts, here ends 2, 3, 4 and now 5 at cycle degree. When I label 1, 2, 3 in those points and put 4 here, I then draw an Elliott channel around this impulse. This is on a semi-log scale on my weekly chart. I draw the first trend line from 1 off to the left of the chart and I'm giving members the exact date and price point of that candlestick so you can replicate this channel. 1 to 3, the first trend line is drawn and then a parallel copy is pulled down to sit on the low of 2. When I draw the channel in that way, it perfectly shows where 4 finally found support. This trend channel is not drawn from 2 to 4 with a parallel copy up here, it's the other way around, 1 to 3 with a copy on 2. Because it so perfectly shows where 4 found support, it looks like I've got the labels of 1, 2, 3 and 4 correct. If that's right, then we're in a final 5th wave. Cycle wave 5 may only subdivide as a 5 wave structure, it can be either an ending diagonal or it can be an impulse. And so far, there's not enough overlapping in here for me to consider the less common and so less likely ending diagonal. I will continue to expect and label this as an impulse unless and until overlapping suggests I need to do a diagonal or consider a diagonal wave count. Here, cycle wave 3 was shorter in length than cycle wave 1, both in terms of price and time. A core Elliott wave rule states a third wave may not be the shortest. That doesn't mean it has to be the longest. I've seen that rule misinterpreted. That's not what it says at all. The rule is really clear. The third wave may not be the shortest. Sometimes third waves are shorter than first waves. And when that happens, it gives you a really important piece of information. It tells you that the fifth wave to come has a limit. It may not be longer than a quality in length with the third third so that that rule stating the third wave may not be the shortest is met. Here that limit is at this price point where 5 equals the same length as 3. Within the final fifth wave, whether it be an impulse or an ending diagonal, the rule for the second wave is exactly the same. It may not move beyond the start of the first wave below this price point. Let's take a look at the daily chart now where the end of cycle 4 is this point down here. From this low to this high, this fits really well as a 5 wave impulse. If that's correct, then cycle 5 should be unfolding as an impulse. Because if cycle 5 were to unfold the only other possible Elliott wave structure, which is an ending diagonal, then all of its subwaves must subdivide as zigzags. Now this could be seen as a zigzag, A, B, C, that would work. So 1 could be a zigzag, 2 could be a zigzag. We'd be expecting 3 now to probably be shorter than 1. And then 4, if we're looking at a diagonal, would have to overlap 1. But here's the difference between an impulse and an ending diagonal for the cycle wave 5 that we're looking at here. An impulse requires 1 to be a 5, as I have labelled it here. 2 may be a complete zigzag. 3 needs to be a 5, and then 4 may not overlap into first wave price territory. So this is going to be the price point which will differentiate those two Elliott wave structures. 
because the rule for where a fourth wave may end for an impulse and a diagonal are different. Within a diagonal, the fourth wave must overlap first wave price territory, but it may not move beyond the end of the second wave, so this invalidation point is the bottom line for cycle wave 5. Primary wave 3, if cycle 5 is an impulse, which it looks like it most likely is and is more likely to be, primary wave 3 may only subdivide as an impulse 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. My target for primary 3 is for it to reach only 0.618 the length of primary 1, because where I see it to be equal in length or especially 1.618 the length of 1, then that limit on my weekly chart would be breached. The wave count wouldn't fit at higher time frames. I am expecting that cycle wave 5 may be a smaller fractal in behaviour to super cycle wave 5. Super cycle 5 has a long extended first wave, a shorter still third wave and I'm expecting a shorter still fifth wave. Cycle wave 5 may be the same, a long extended first wave, a shorter still third wave and then a shorter still fifth wave. That's what I'm expecting is quite likely for this market at this time. At the hourly chart level let's have a look at intermediate wave 2. It can still be more than one of a few possible corrective structures and it could even be a flat correction A, B to complete and then C but I think at this stage it's most likely to be a double flat and so I'm relabeling it as such. W, X complete over here is an expanded flat and now a 3, 3, 5 to complete for Y to complete the second flat in a double. W is an expanded flat Y also possibly a flat correction. Now I may need to change this labelling. Intermediate 2 could continue as a double combination. We could relabel this as a diagonal down in here to end here. That will just fit when I look at it at the 5 minute chart. We could label A, B, C. However it doesn't make much difference to where we expect it to end. Whether it be a double flat or a double combination, I'm expecting Y should end about the same level as W because the purpose of Y in both of those Elliott wave structures is exactly the same, to take up time and move price sideways. To achieve that purpose, Y usually ends about the same level as W. Now we cannot be seeing a double zigzag unfolding here because this is very obviously not a zigzag, this is a flat correction. Y waves of double zigzags have a different purpose. Their purpose is to deepen a correction when the first zigzag does not move price deep enough. But now that we've got a flat correction for the first structure, I'll expect Y to end about the same level as this. If I'm wrong, if this is just totally wrong and I have to relabel it, then final support for intermediate 2 would be expected around the upper edge of the Elliott channel I've copied over from the daily chart. And intermediate 2 may not move beyond the start of 1 below this price point. However, there is some strength from Lowry's data. There is some strength within the sideways movement toward the upside. And if my Elliott wave count is right and the next move up is intermediate 3 within primary 3, then a strong upward pull from a strong third wave may force the second wave to be relatively shallow, although it's not turning out to be quite so brief. At the weekly chart time frame, all the subdivisions here I am seeing almost in an identical way to my first weekly chart, except here within the entire bull market beginning March 2009, I have moved everything down one degree. The implication for the short to mid term is absolutely no different from my first weekly chart. It's the severity of the following bear market which differs. That first weekly chart has the possible end of grand super cycle wave 1, a huge 5 step forward movement coming to an end in another possibly up to a year or so, whereas this one sees it only as a, super, super, uh, sorry, as a cycle wave 1. If we come into the end of a grand super cycle wave we'd be expecting it to be followed by an absolutely devastating bear market, but this idea expect cycle wave 1 to be followed 
technically by a bear market for cycle two and that we'd be expecting at least a 20% reduction in price but not necessarily a devastating bear market and it could be over in just one or two years. So this wave count after cycle two is complete is extremely bullish. Bullish for the short to mid term, bearish for a while after that and then the resumption of a new bull market to show a really strong increase. Here within cycle wave one, primary five unfolding, one, two, three, four, five, still needs to complete to the upside. Let's have a look at some classic technical analysis. Now the week is closed, what does this weekly candlestick look like? This is a little doji. A doji on its own is not a reversal signal. It represents a balance of bulls and bears. It represents indecision. If we see a good red candlestick following it then we would have an evening doji star but the three candlesticks that would make it up this is a really important point about candlestick reversal patterns they would not come at the end of an upward trend they would come within more of a context of a little pullback in order for a candlestick reversal pattern to be read as a reversal pattern there has to be something to reverse so a bullish candlestick pattern like this one has to come after some downward movement for it to be bullish. Here's some downward movement, here's a bullish reversal pattern. Here's some upward movement, here's a bearish reversal pattern. Within the context of this consolidation, if we see candlestick reversal patterns in the middle of it, this is not reversing an upward trend here from this low. This is just within a range bound movement with resistance and support here. And so if we get a red candlestick next week, we can't read that as a bearish candlestick reversal pattern because it's not reversing an upward trend preceding it. I hope that makes sense. The support here about 2800 resistance identified on the chart here just above 2925 from these previous highs back here. This week, volume does not support upward movement, a higher, higher, higher low, but lighter volume. That's actually been a feature for some years now of this market. I am not going to give that much weight at all. This looks like a little pause within a longer upward trend and a pullback here that ended down here. On balance volume gave a new all time high back here when price moved it up to this new high, but price has not sorry on balance volume supported the new all-time high in price and so this is bullish i'm drawing a new trend line here for support from on balance volume it gives a bullish signal back here let's expect any pullbacks may be forced to be more brief and shallow due to support here from on balance volume possibly it does tend to work rather well with its trend lines rsi is in neutral territory there's plenty of room for price to rise or fall and when RSI for this particular market reaches into overbought it can remain there for many weeks at a time while price moves quite a great distance on its own it is not an indication when it reaches extreme that the trend has to end there it does not ADX is declining the DX lines are whipsawing at this time frame at this time there is not a clear trend but we have had a series of higher highs and higher lows up until we had a lower swing low below here. But now within this downward movement, we've had a recovery high above here, suggesting we may have a low in place down here, coming in conjunction with a very strong bullish engulfing candlestick pattern, which comes after some fall in price. That had support from volume. It looks like we've got another low in place here. What about the shorter term picture? At the daily chart level, it looks like there may be a small pennant pattern unfolding. I'll keep an eye on this. We have to be a little bit flexible in the early days of pennants and flags unfolding. The trend lines may need to be adjusted as it continues. Most of them come with decline in volume as price moves sideways. To calculate a target, we take the flagpole length, the start of the flagpole down here to the top here. And we add that to the potential breakout point from the for the pennant. That calculation, if the breakout's about here, gives a 
target at 3072 which is a little below my Elliott wave target at 3104. At this time frame ADX is also declining telling us there is no clear trend. ATR was flat as price was falling giving me a little bit more confidence that this downward movement is a counter trend movement because for this particular market when it's in a good sustained bearish trend it tends to exhibit a lot of strength in those bearish trends. This exhibits some weakness here. It looks like there was a low in place here. On balance volume is constrained above support, below resistance. A breakout of those lines would provide a little signal. The resistance line is not particularly strong, nor is the support line, so the signal would be weak. RSI is in neutral territory. There is room for price to rise or fall. MACD is bullish but not yet full ball bullish. Stochastics is overbought, hopeless as a timing tool for this market, can remain overbought for quite long periods of time. What about breadth and volatility? At the weekly chart level this week, the AD line makes a new all time high. This is an extremely bullish signal. The AD line usually leads, price usually follows. I will be expecting with reasonable confidence new all time highs from the S&P in coming weeks. Price does not move in straight lines, there will be pullbacks and consolidations along the way. Within an upward trend, pullbacks and consolidations are opportunities to join the trend. At the daily chart level, for Friday, the AD line moves lower, price moves slightly lower, no short term divergence, we still have this mid term divergence which I just showed you at the weekly chart level. Price and inverted VIX. Inverted VIX has some developing longer term bearish divergence with price. Price has made a new all time high here. Inverted VIX has not managed to make a corresponding high. This upward movement from price does not come with a corresponding decline in VIX. VIX is a little bit stronger. For the short term, we had some bearish divergence last week that simply disappeared. I have found inverted VIX to not be as reliable as the AD line in recent months. But I think it is warning that this bull market is ageing and somewhat aged now. The short term picture, we had some bullish divergence here. It's been followed by a very small amount of overall downward movement for Friday. So that may have failed for the short term. Now Friday inverted VIX moves higher. Price moves very slightly lower, mostly sideways really, but inverted VIX had quite a strong spike. Downward movement from price does not come with a normal corresponding increase in VIX. VIX has declined, remember this is inverted VIX. With VIX declining on Friday, for the short term that's bullish. That's all from me this week with your S&P analysis. I hope all our members and viewers are most having a most fabulous weekend.